Hey friends, I'm George. When you think of blackened, if the image you're getting is overspiced charred meat, what you're gonna learn in this video is gonna change your worldview. Blackening something properly might be one of the most challenging and rewarding kitchen skills. Blackening was popularized in the 1980s by Chef Paul Prudhomme, who is known for his signature blackened redfish and Cajun style cuisine. In my opinion, Chef Francis Mullman is the master of blackening. He's one of my greatest inspirations in the kitchen. Blackening food is a journey. And by the end of this video, you'll not only know how to perfectly blacken any kind of meat, chicken, fish, vegetable, but you'll also learn the technique and the science behind properly blackened food. And hopefully, it'll take your skills in the kitchen to a much higher level. Blackening meat is performed on a solid surface. The food does not come in contact with a flame, so blackening is not grilling in that sense. You do not need to blacken in a cast iron pan. I prefer carbon steel, but we'll talk about that later. Blackening is not smoking. You're not adding an external smoke to the food you were blackening. Blackening does not necessarily mean that the outside of the food you're eating will be charred or black. But from the perspective of a health concern, there is no concrete evidence that blackening food is carcinogenic. One concern is the presence of acrylamide, which is carcinogenic. Acrylamide, though, is a chemical that's found in starchy foods if they're cooked at high temperatures for a long time. There is no acrylamide in charred or burnt foods like toast. Charred food being carcinogenic is just a hypothesis right now. What has been proven to cause cancer is heavily processed meats that are saturated with nitrates. Don't eat them. Blackening does not have to happen at very high temperatures. As a matter of fact, I rarely allow my pan to go over 375 degrees Fahrenheit or 190 degrees Celsius, unless there's a specific flavor profile I'm trying to achieve. And that brings us to what proper blackening actually is. Blackening is when you take a suspension of herbs and spices in a fat. You coat the outside of the food with that mixture and you use varying levels of heat to extract the essences of the seasonings but while marrying those essences with the extraordinary flavor produced by the Maillard reaction. The Maillard reaction is a chemical reaction between amino acids and the breakdown of sugars during the cooking process that gives browned food its distinctive color and flavor. Remember when grandma used to spend hours at the stove gently stirring and watching her food cook? I always thought this was like therapy for my grandmother. She would sit there in a trance and tinker with the flame, move the food around the pan slowly, for hours, what she was really doing was using the heat in the pan to extract the flavors of the food. It's definitely a feeling, and it comes with being acquainted with the food and what happens to the food as the heat breaks down the sugars and the proteins. All right, I'm gonna go out on a limb here, and I promise you that it's gonna cause a huge stir in the comments down below. But after spending my entire life around food, there's a certain energy in food that you can feel. <laughs> you can call it a sixth sense or whatever, I can walk past a bubbling pot of food being prepared by another chef and know if it needs salt or if it's too salty without tasting it. I know it sounds crazy, but I've spoken to other chefs and they've told me they've experienced the same thing. If you're new to blackening food, it's important that you control the variables. Otherwise, you'll never be able to have consistency. And you'll also have a hard time understanding what the spices are doing to the flavor of the food you're blackening. The single most important control you have is over the heat. The cast iron pan has almost become synonymous with blackening, but unless you're really dialed in with cast iron cooking, I do not recommend you start out with cast iron or any heavy bottom pan for that matter. If the temperature in the pan gets too high or low, it will take too long to make adjustments. I prefer to use carbon steel. Carbon steel heats up quickly and cools down faster, so if your temperature shifts too fast, you can make faster adjustments. I also feel that the flavor of a blackened dish tastes better when it's cooked on a carbon steel or cast iron surface as opposed to on a stainless surface, porcelain coated or nonstick. If you don't use thermometers while cooking, I suggest you do. I use a number of Thermoworks products because they give consistent results and they are very well made. They've not sponsored this video and I have purchased all of my Thermoworks thermometers with my own money. There is a link to these thermometers I use in the description below. To help me focus on what's happening on the food I'm blackening today, I'm going to blacken it on this electric grill. It's a good way to start out. It becomes easier to monitor the temperature so you can see what signs to look for during a cook with a consistent temperature. 
Once you become comfortable with blackening consistently, switch to carbon steel. I'm gonna set my temp to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 205 degrees Celsius and then adjust the grill so that it is actually at that temperature. While that's heating up, let's make the blackening seasoning. I use clarified butter in my blackening mixture. The sugars in the milk whey in plain melted butter are gonna cause the food to prematurely blacken. I'm not saying it's bad. It's very much like coffee. Some like a dark roast, some don't. But if you allow the outside to cook to a point where it's charred, the nuances and intricate flavors of the seasonings will be dominated by a roasted flavor. What I want to do is bring out those flavors rather than mask them. While that's heating up, let's make the blackening seasoning. In a small bowl, add two tablespoons or 30 milliliters of a seriously good quality Hungarian paprika. A good Hungarian paprika is bright, more orange than brownish red, unless it's smoked, and even then it'll be bright. You can go to town and add whatever type of paprika you like, smoked, hot, but in this recipe today, I'm going to keep the herbs simple. Remember, we're trying to minimize the variables so that our blackened food can be consistent and delicious. One tablespoon or 15 milliliters of organic granulated garlic, one teaspoon or five milliliters of finely ground black pepper, half a teaspoon or two to three milliliters of cayenne pepper, and one teaspoon or two to three milliliters of organic Herb de Provence. When you blacken the Herb de Provence properly, it creates an explosion of delicious flavors. Now the last thing you want to do is add salt to your blackening mix. The enemy of the Maillard effect is water. Water will keep the Maillard effect from happening. Check this out. Paper cup, paper cup over flame, paper cup burns. Add water to the paper cup. Paper cup doesn't burn. The water has to evaporate before the cup will burn. Ask any plumber. As long as there's water in a copper pipe, they can't solder copper together. The water absorbs all the heat first before the copper can get hot enough to melt the solder. So in a Maillard reaction, Water present will stop the sugars from breaking down in a way that will produce the savoriness that comes from the beautiful Maillard effect. Drizzle the clarified butter until it forms a loose paste. A friend of mine caught this delicious thresher shark and that is what I'm gonna blacken today. Generously coat whatever meat or vegetable you're blackening and place it on the hot surface. You're gonna need some decent ventilation for this. Initially, my grill was set to 400 degrees Fahrenheit and I did this in anticipation of a temperature drop. After a few seconds, turn the temperature down so that it's 375 degrees or 190 degrees Celsius. The goal here is to develop the flavors and the spices while simultaneously allowing for the temperature to break down the sugars and the proteins in the piece of fish so that the Maillard reaction can occur, resulting in the best flavor. But what is the best flavor? That's where science goes out the window. The best flavor is when you like it and whomever you're serving the blackened dish to likes it just as much. For some, that means black, spicy, and charred on the outside. For others, it can mean dark and savory. This surface is nonstick, and that can pose a problem because part of knowing when the Maillard effect is happening is by slowly pulling up on the corner of the fish to see if it naturally releases from the pan. On a nonstick surface, it's gonna release all the time. So use the edge of the fish as a gauge. If about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch or six millimeters has changed in color, lift one edge of the meat off the surface high enough to see if the color is as you like it. The key to how your herbs are reacting is directly correlated to the scent as well. Don't ignore that. Focus on the scent coming off of the cooking food. How do the aromas make you feel? Focus. It's amazing how subtle the scent is that reveals if you've gone too far and overcooked the spices or just had the flame on too high. There's a window of opportunity to correct the process, but you have to monitor it. Keep your oven preheated to 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 93 degrees Celsius. There are times when I have come up with the perfect blackening on the outside, but the inside was totally raw. Take the food out of the pan or put the food with the pan in your preheated oven. I use a probe and set the temperature to whatever internal temperature I'm looking for. For fish, I go for 150. 
But what happens if you're blackening a thin piece of meat, like a thinly sliced chicken cutlet? You might be tempted to jack up the heat because if you don't, your meat could dry out while it's blackening, but that may change the flavor of the blackening drastically. Here's a secret tip. Add a half a teaspoon or a couple of milliliters of grain alcohol to the blackening mix. This little bit of alcohol will speed up the blackening process. Just before serving, season with salt to your desire. Make sure you keep track of what temperatures worked as well as the time it took to get the blackening to where you wanted it to be. Eventually it'll become second nature and by interacting with your dishes this way, you'll become a better cook. I'd love to know more about you, so if you have a blackening seasoning recipe you're willing to share, please leave it in the comments down below. If you like this video, smash that like button and by doing so, you will become actively involved in helping my channel grow. Cheers.